It is obvious, scanning the globe, that we all look different. Family members, even identical twins, have small things that set them apart. But once you begin to explore what different people perceive as beautiful, we realize that throughout history, different countries have had completely different standards of beauty, playing almost directly into the saying, beauty is in the eyes of its beholder. But there's a catch. It's not. It's in the eyes of society. Traditionally, standards of beauty have ranged from Thai women using metal ringlets to elongate their necks like this, Chinese families binding their daughter's feet to look like this, and Middle Eastern women growing facial hair like this. Coincidentally, I'm half Japanese and half Persian, and I grew up with these two very different cultural backgrounds. And as a result, I have been exposed to both their rich histories and their modern lifestyles. Today, today our presence as human beings has become increasingly cosmopolitan through tools like social media and ease of travel, and regions throughout the globe have begun to gravitate towards a nearly ubiquitous standard of European beauty, and the U.S. is no exception. While slitting your eyelids might seem a little bit absurd, when I visited Japan two summers ago, I noticed that women were getting slits cut in their eyelids to get a more curved in eye shape, dyed their hair blonde, and were wearing blue colored eye contacts. When I visited J Iran the next summer, I noticed that women were also dyeing their hair blonde while getting Botox and nose jobs. Their goal was eerily similar in both countries, and it looked something like this. And it's not just, it's all around the globe. Like, the, the standard of European beauty has grown into a worldwide phenomenon. Breast augmentation surgery in the U.S. has surged 40% in the past decade, with nearly 300,000 women opting to increase their breast size just last year. And it's not just men, or women either. Men have also shown increased body dissatisfaction through media idealization of a muscular body shape, and they're looking for something maybe like this. <laughs> but maybe a little bit more realistically like that. Either way, societal pressure has done this to us. I'm not here to bash plastic surgery. Every man and every woman should have the freedom to decide what happens to their body, but I'm here to explore the drive behind the desire to look a certain way, a certain socially prescribed way. Why do we feel it is necessary to alter our body features? Advertising, movies, TV, Facebook, all are countless outlets that are contributing to this mind-boggling movement. Why can't we just appreciate individuals for who they are? And this brings me to one question that I would like to ask you. Raise your hand if you are 100% happy with the way that you look. Polish Gestalt psychologist Solomon Osh conducted a series of experiments that led to the Osh paradigm. In his experiment, people consistently changed their answers from what they knew was a correct response to an incorrect response just because others in the experiment gave an incorrect answer. You may have experienced it just now, depending on how the rest of the room reacted to my question. Osh essentially studied peer pressure, examining how the collective opinion of the majority could influence individuals to change their answers to go along with others' opinions. If you did not raise your hand, ask yourself, why are you unhappy with the way that you look? What influences your happiness or unhappiness? Do you want to change the way that you look just because everyone else is doing it? 
this might just be an extreme case of the Osh paradigm. When I was younger, I was bullied. A lot, actually, for the way that I looked. And oftentimes I wondered, why was it that some people were praised for their facial features, but I was bashed for mine? Societal standards of beauty are so deeply ingrained in society that even children are tuned into them. The way we dress and the way we look affects the way that people interact with us and perceive us at first glance, but why? We are encouraged and sometimes even required to wear certain clothing to the workplace, yet Steve Jobs, the inventor of Apple technology, was famous for showing up to work in New Balance sneakers and a t-shirt. This comes to show just how little meaning appearance should have, yet it still reigns over our society like some dark cloud. Even I chose this outfit carefully to come present this talk to you today because I wanted to be taken seriously. No, I don't have all the answers. I don't know how to fix this mess, and it sure is hard to be radical. But you can break the reins. You can make the standard obsolete. Make the world a better, more accepting place. Be the change you want to see in this world. And most importantly, know that you are beautiful. Thank you.